Hello, hello, hello everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi guys, this is DJ Me at the Dewey and this is a good way to start Podbrix Africa. Hi Tina, how are you doing? Okay, so today um, we have a special guest in the building. <laughs> um, her name is um, Rafiat Akinwadi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So I'm going to be introducing her to you before you actually get to meet her. So let me just say one or two things about her and then we can get started. Hello everybody. Hi Ronald. Welcome. Okay, so while we wait for Queen Rafi to be here, you guys can keep me busy. Ask any question you want to ask about APA. I hope I'll be able to answer. But yes, this is um, an open space for everybody. You can say anything you want to say now. You can ask any question you want to ask. And then I'll be able to answer your question. Yes, I'm super excited about this particular episode. Because I feel like I'm going to learn a lot from the Queen of Podcasting in Nigeria. <laughs> Okay, Rafiat is a radio presenter, a voice of artist and podcaster with over six years of experience hosting both daytime and nighttime programs. She's currently the community manager of Ninja Pod Up, a podcast community for podcasters in Nigeria. Awesome. Rafiat is passionate about conversations, she's passionate about well-researched conversations and topics with the aim of educating targeted listeners with required demographics. She's the host of Queen Rafi's Space, a podcast that touches on a wide array of topics ranging from motivation, inspiration, books, everyday tips and tricks poetry, societal issues, and pop culture. So, Queen Rafi's Space is available on over 25 platforms and she has over 40,000 downloads with 500 plus episodes since its launch in 2018. Now that you've met Queen Rafi, we just have to wait for her to hop on this train. And then we can get started with Podbricks Africa, the in-betweens, the behind-the-scenes, the successes, and the failures. Okay, do we need a subscription to be part of this platform? Well, you need to register. You need to apply to be a member of APRA to be a intimate, an intimate part of this platform. Uh, click the link in our bio and just scroll down some of the links that we've put there. You see um, the join the tribe link so you can register and then we'll go through your application and we'll let you know if you've been accepted when and if you've been accepted uh, we'll send you um, a congratulatory letter of acceptance and then we'll also issue a certificate of membership um, you should keep that certificate because once certain initiatives are coming up, uh, certain membership packs are also up and running, you will be asked to prove that you are a member of APA. Okay? Oh. Hey. It seems I can't wave at some people. Okay. So there you go, run out. That's all you need to do to be part of APA, really. And then 
once you part you can decide to join a whatsapp group or a telegram group or a facebook group or you can decide not to be part of these groups either way you are a member and if there's anything super important that you know all members should be aware of you would definitely get the message because yeah we'll send you an email okay let me see I am not saying for your Rafi. I don't know why. Um, okay, so I've invited for your Rafi. Let me see. Okay. So while we wait, um, I'd like to say a few things that some of you may not be aware of. Firstly, we have um, a free resource that you can download. Um, it's called Effective Consistency Hack. Yeah, I think consistency as a podcast. That some of the tips that are in that um, particular book will help you. And then we have um, the Rookie Guide, Podcasting for Beginners. Everything you need to get started and get going. No one is not able to join. Hello. Hi, Radio Apprentice. I feel like we have to do something together. Hey, the Queen. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing great. Nice to be here. I hope you can hear me clearly. Though. I can hear you clearly. Can you hear me clearly? Awesome. Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. Okay, so while we were waiting for you, I was trying to answer a few questions and let some people know some things that we have that they can leverage, you know, as a, as a okay. great community that we are. Okay. Okay, do you have podcasters gathering anytime in your plan where podcasters can showcase their work? Yes, uh, we have a group where podcasters can showcase their latest work. They can let people know if they're offering their services as an editor, a producer, a scriptwriter, twice a week on Mondays and on Fridays. So I hope I've answered your question, Ronald, but now we have to go straight into the program. Welcome, Rafia. How are you doing today? I've already introduced you to the public, but you should say one or two things about yourself. There is nothing bad about knowing you on. This is your bragging right. So tell us everything about you. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sure you did a good job before I came on. I, my name is um, Rafia Fasulande. A lot more people know me as you think, Rafi. I am a podcast producer, a podcast host, and I have produced my own podcast, Team Rafi Space, for over three years now. Next year is going to be in February, or going to be four years since I started podcasting and producing my own podcast. I've also produced um, for a couple of, yeah. <laughs> I've also produced for a couple of other um, organizations as well. I enjoy audio storytelling. I feel like it's an amazing, intimate form of medium that is going to last the test of time. And, being able to create that is something that gives me a lot of joy. I'm funny, I'm crazy, and I'm just everything nice and spicy. I can feel the vibe. First of all, where do you reside? So I know if we are meeting up very soon. <laughs> At least in Lagos. Oh, no, that's, no, that's not fair. That's not fair because me, I'm in Abuja. <laughs> I, I, I mean, Abuja is not, it's not far, far off as well. I, I do come to Abuja once in a while. So awesome. <laughs> Whenever you do come to Abuja, hit me up. Let's meet. Let's talk. Maybe we can just do a podcast episode and share everything, everything, everything. I will. I would definitely like that. I show you. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so you are the community manager of Ninja Pod. That is pretty amazing. Yes. I know Ninja Pod actually. Yes, and I think I know Ninja Pod through your account. 
So tell me, what's the secret to community management so far, you know, as the community wow. manager? Wow, I think it's uh, community management, I have to say, this is something that I, I stumbled upon, honestly, because before Ninja Pod Hub, I, I said I was, I've been podcasting for about two years, I think, at the time. And I just would always find myself needing to, to talk to other people who related to what I do with this podcasting. And not just relating, like people who are in Nigeria who are doing the same podcasting thing. Because podcasting can be a very lonely journey sometimes. And I didn't exactly find that. So I went on Twitter one time, and I think I was in 2019, I think. And I spoke about guys. Um, does anybody know like any podcast like um, uh, community or something? But there wasn't really any response to that. So I said, okay, what do you guys think? Like, maybe we start, like, a WhatsApp group where we can just come together and talk about podcasts and help each other out. And a lot of people were like, yeah, if you start, I'm going to join. If you start, I'm going to join. And I started the, the um, Pod Magic Creators group on WhatsApp. And we went from, like, 15 members to, like, about 120. And then Ninja Pod Hub, Fefe, who's, like, the um, creator and owner of that, she reached out to me early this year, she was like, you know what, I have to structure, you have the numbers, let's come together and do an amazing job and just get podcasting in Nigeria out there because we're beginning to get that recognition. So if we don't put ourselves together, we would not have the amount of um, impact that we'd like to have. And I love that. And I love the idea that she brought. So we collaborated together. So I managed the community, um, which I already do, which is the, podcast, the, the WhatsApp, the Telegram, and just sending out Every relevant information that the community has to know. I think the joy of doing that is just I I, I knew a lot of them started also started with, um, in the WhatsApp group when we're just a WhatsApp group before joining the Jackpot Hub. So I'm able to relate to a lot of their podcast journeys. I'm able to relate to a lot of the struggles. Um, it's easy to just communicate with them and talk to them. I mean, sometimes they use the word queen mother. I don't think I am that, but I think having that one-on-one -on -one <laughs> rapport with each of them. And it is what makes the running the community very, very easy. And just knowing that we are all there for one goal, which is mm. to be amazing podcasters and to represent the Nigerian podcast industry, fantastic. That sounds really good. That sounds amazing. But I, I love the fact that you collaborated with KK, you know, to make this work. This is really beautiful. So it, it, it's almost like you're the co founder of Ninja Pod or between the Kate, but yeah. Community manager and it's growing and growing strong. Well done. Okay, so thank you. You've had forty thousand down. You've had your share. You know your time of falling and standing, of making mistakes. You know of getting it right. What What would you say is the one thing that attracted people to listen to your podcast? Hmm. I think the thing that brings a lot of people <laughs> to curiosity podcast is is my authenticity and my personality. And I say that because um, my podcast is me like a personal journal, for a lack of better word, it's almost like an online diary where I'm talking about myself and the things that I see and how I see the world and the angles at which different trending topics I see them from. Most times I, I like to believe that I see things in a way that people don't see them, or maybe a lot of people see them, but don't have the opportunity to voice them out. So I'm already excited to bring that angle. And I think that when I have guests as well, I be, when, that's when I bring on guests on the show, I let them be themselves. I let them be authentically themselves. Like I'm not stressing you out to ask you for like punchlines or anything. I'm just letting you experience the fact that you're here talking about yourself in the best way possible. So I think that authenticity and that personality is what makes people always come back to, to listen to the show. And then I think another big part of why people also listen to Kenyatta's case is the motivation aspect of it. Because every time, I don't know how it happens, I happen to tie everything back to some motivational lesson. <laughs> I don't know if it's in me. always in me to... I mean, it's always easy to want people to, you know, as much as I'm sharing my experience or anything, I just don't want it to look like I'm talking and there's really no end goal to it. So most times the end goal is always about motivation, inspiration, and what it is you can do to be better about yourself. So I think those are the three things that, you know, bring people back the motivation, the authenticity, and my personality. Because whether I'm low or I'm high or I'm down, I'm sharing that in my podcast business. They know me to a certain degree. They know what I think that is about. They know who I'm married to. They know how I just sit in it. You know, all of those things, I think, is what makes them really, really resonate with the podcast. 
So it's safe to say that your comfort zone is what is giving you this number of You're comfortable in your skin, in your personality, and you're letting the whole world see who you are, and you are extending that vibe with your guests, right? Letting them look just let's just talk and have fun, which is how I like to do my podcast, right? You know, we are just going to be laughing all through. Some of my podcasts, yeah, I have to edit the laughs. <laughs> The laughter, you know, like, no, we, we laugh too long in this part. Let's, let me cut some part you, you get. So I, I agree I with you. That. In terms of, yes, authenticity within yourself, you know, just letting people be there. And I think podcasting is so powerful because unlike the conventional, you know, media, we are telling our own stories. We are telling, it's not some of the things we share, man, that, but their opinions and we want to be heard and we are being heard and that's the beautiful thing and I love the fact that it's a growing industry in Africa although Nigeria more than any other African country and that's why Africa exists we, we want to you know try and discover all of this all other podcasters in other countries that we are probably not seeing you know and let them know okay we are seeing you you know you can Get out there and be who you are. The old world can still listen to you. That's what it is. So thank you very much. And congratulations on $40,000. That's a massive win. My next question. Questions all the way. <laughs> so we can all learn. And um, I can also learn. Tell me. You've had more than 500 episodes, right? Yes, I, I am currently about 10 episodes away from 600. Okay, which of these episodes would you consider your favorite episode? <laughs> oh my God, that is so difficult. I mean, I have been asked this question a lot of times, and every time okay. I, three. Have been, uh, I mean, my my the first episode ever that I did, and I think that I really was happy about was I did an episode with my dad. It was oh. the father's day. It was very. Um, yeah, it was very unplanned. I just went back home and I was like, wow, I'll, this is a nice opportunity to talk to my dad. And I spoke to him and we had, like, I mean, I'm very close to my dad outside of podcasting, but to bring that to the podcast and to hear him just talk about different things like he spoke about, you know, being a father and all of those angles. And I spoke to him about my childhood and things that I felt like were quite different from, because I just came back from service at the time. And when you go for service in Nigeria, NYC, you meet with other people and you realize, wow, there's so much that your upbringing didn't let me see that you're now seeing. And I had that conversation with him. And I really loved that episode for two things because, number one, my dad was so open. My dad was so very vulnerable and willing to answer all of the questions that I asked him. I didn't expect that. Um, and secondly, a lot of people really liked that episode. I was very surprised because I just was doing this because I'm at home. My dad is here. Let me do it. A lot of people resonated with that. So I really, really was very happy about that episode. Um, I really liked that episode. Another episode that I think that I, I did, that I'm also um, very, very, um, very proud of when I look back on and I think about it, I had an episode this year with um, that Yene. He is one of the very few photographers who was able to capture the end class protest from beginning to end. And I was very proud of that episode because a lot of people, this is a massive thing that happened in Nigeria, that a lot of people have always said, like, did it happen? Did it not happen? Did it happen? Did it not happen? But hearing from somebody who was on ground talk about the events that he experienced and all of the backlash that had come to him because of that from the government and everything that had, he had to risk his life just for trying to document this important monumental piece of history was was, in, was amazing to me. I think I left that episode just, and after the time I spoke to him, I had already, I mean, I think a lot of people can relate to this, I had already lost peace in the Nigerian state, honestly, and I was just downcasted about everything going on. When I spoke to him and I realized that despite everything that he's gone through, despite all the things that he said, everything that happened to him, he was still very hopeful in Nigeria. I was like, who the hell am I not to be hopeful? <laughs> so I left that feeling very, very proud of myself. And a lot of people listened to that, and I got a lot of feedback saying, oh, wow, Rafi, I didn't believe this happened, but hearing this person speak about it this way, now I believe this happened. So to me, I really, really like that episode. I'm very thankful that he allowed us to have that episode. He was so open with everything that I couldn't, I mean, in fact, I had to stop him from saying something. 
because I'm like, guy, I don't want you to get into any more trouble, so let's not even get into that. So I really, really like that episode as well. Um, another episode that I think that I love that I did this year that I'm hoping to capitalize on and move into the next year is I did something called the Chat Cafe. Usually my podcast, like I said, is a personal journal, so I'm very, very scared about speaking to more than one person at a time because I like my guests to feel amazing when they're on, like the spotlight is on them. But I wanted to do something different for the podcast this year. So I brought in two of my friends and we spoke on men and aphrodisiac. And it was a very eye-opening conversation for me because the conversation of aphrodisiac sex and all of that is a, almost like a taboo subject in Nigeria. It's very dicey place to dabble into. And even me, I find myself very uncomfortable during the conversation asking and saying something. <laughs> but we were still able to have it. And every time I go back and I listen, to the episode, and I'm just like, wow, this was an episode well done, because these two people came bearing it all, explaining to me how men feel about sex, and so many things that I believe that men didn't think of about sex, that's a lie, they actually do have this kind of struggles, so that episode I'm very proud of. Finally, it would be um, the, the birthday episode that I dropped for my 28th year's birthday, that was last year. Uh, that episode was where I opened up to my, my, my podcast listeners and I told them about the fact that I've been struggling with infertility and I've spoken about a couple of insights that I, I, I had and that was an, an amazing episode for me. It was, it was, it was not, it was for me because it felt like I was finally onboarding this thing and I was talking about it. And it was important that I did that because a lot of times I've always said, I'm going to share with my listeners when I finally like get pregnant. And I'm like, yay, did you know I did this, 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 but look at me now. But I realized that <laughs> maybe I don't have to wait till I have a look at me now story. Maybe now is the time to share with my audience what I was going through and everything. The reception from that was really amazing. And also for me, it was very free. And also because I think that the fact that the way a lot of Nigerian documented stories about infertility, especially for young women. I'm very young, I just crossed 29. And a lot of people don't see you and think that you're going to have that issue. Like, oh, you're young. The oldies are so good. But we have those issues and they happen to us. And sharing that with my audience was, was good. I mean, I didn't even promote the episode because I, I wasn't so confident in a lot of people knowing about that, even though I put it on a podcast. But a lot of people still listen to it. And that, that was really mind-blowing for me. So those were like, those are some of the episodes. I had a lot more, but those are the ones that I, oh, I think of the moment. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Okay, Thank so you. the next thing I want to ask is, I noticed that you you are pretty much versed with the solo style, the guesting style, meaning like of podcasting, doing it solo mm. or inviting guests. Now, which do you prefer yeah. between doing your podcast solo or inviting a guest over or for hosting a podcast which do you like yeah give me your reason in terms of cost in terms of production which do you think is faster to produce if it's easy, let me know uh, uh, I mean if there's any potential guest on here if I invite you to more because I love my guest episodes but I always love my solo episodes <laughs> I like my solo episodes. You know, I, I like I, my solo episodes. Okay. Okay, I you want to do something? Go ahead. Personally, I think my solo episodes are the attention is on me. Two four seven. I'm sorry. I'm still safe, but yeah, <laughs> you're listening to my voice from A to Z. But then some of my guests are my crazy friends, and we just talk about this random thing. This random dance and gist that, you know, bring the listenership more than the solo episode, right? So why do you prefer solo episodes? I prefer solo episodes for three reasons. Number one, I'm able to control the narrative mm -hmm. the way that I want the listener to, to hear it. I have an idea in my head and I record that and I put that idea out there. And in case the idea that I have is not what is being translated when I listen back, and cancel that and record again. So it's way cost, cost effective because it's just me. I'm just here facing the mic. And number two, I feel like my solo episodes actually challenge me a lot more than my guest episodes. I know some people now agree, but that's the truth for me. My solo episodes, because I'm the only person, I now have to do the job of making sure that my listener is entertained, my listener is engaged, 
and that my listener is not bored. So I'm much more conscious about every line that I speak, every word that I say has to be that it is contributing to the conversation. If it is not contributing to it, there is no need for me to put that line in there. That's one thing that I try to do. So some of the episodes are maybe to guide that. But when you have a guest on, you really can control what they say. You really can you really can um, micromanage them, especially because I like my guests to come and just it's empty yourself. Every time I have guests, most of them always say, Rafi, I feel like I had a therapy session on your podcast. Because for me, I'm just like, just go ahead, just say whatever is on your mind. Everything you want to say, just have the spotlight on you. So um, you're not able to control that. And I'm, I'm a bit of a control freak. I like to control things a little bit. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I've had episodes with guests where the conversation completely spirals into something totally different. And I have to make it work regardless. This time, sometimes that has been for good. Most of the time, actually, it's been for good. But there are some times that I would just wish that wasn't how the conversation was. But when it's solo, I'm able to control that and I'm able to, you know, guide that kind of, that kind of thing. So I think that's why I kind of like the solo episodes. But one thing I would say about the guest episodes is the guests that I, that I always bring on my podcast and I always opportunity to come on, they raise the conversation to a whole new level. So I like that, to be fair. I really like that they bring a different dynamic that is really not known to the guests. And maybe I don't have, I like that. But if I could do the podcast just only me talking every single freaking day, I would take that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what about co-hosting? You co-hosted episodes before? Hosting no, um, I... I haven't co-hosted uh, um, episodes. Mostly, I always just have them as guests. So I don't really have like co-host situation. I don't know if I have uh, explored the co-host situation because I, like I said, I'm a bit of control freak. So I, and I also feel like sometimes when you have a co-host, in fact, I, I, I have very few podcasts that have co-hosts that I listen to because I, I don't, I like when, I like, Podcast is an intimate medium. I want, when I'm listening, I want you to be that this host is speaking to me and the center of your world. So I like to do that same experience to my audience. So when I'm speaking, I want you to see like it's just you, which is why I would never use things like all oh, you guys or whatever. Like I want you to, I want you to feel like you are the only person I am speaking to. You are the person that matters most to me right now. And that's why I've never really explored the process. Um, option. Awesome. Awesome. That sounds good. Everybody has their preferences and now we know Queen Rafa's preference when it comes to podcasting. <laughs> but wait, wait. <laughs> Let me digress a bit. So what's your favorite movie? Movie? I don't have a favorite movie. I have a lot of movies that I like. I don't, have, I don't have a favorite movie. movie. When people ask <laughs> me for my favorite thing, like my favorite color, my favorite this, my favorite that. And I tell them, I don't have a favorite. They look at me like I'm weird, but it's the truth. I have a favorite color, though, but I don't have a favorite movie. <laughs> I don't, I don't have, have my favorite, favorite, favorite color. If that, if, that is, if that is green, you're wearing my favorite color. Green is my favorite color. Every day, every okay, day, green. Green, anything. Oh, green is your favorite color? Okay, I can prepare yeah. then. <laughs> okay, green is my I, favorite color. I don't have a favorite it's not because I don't want to. I, I don't know. I can like this today very much and then tomorrow liking something else very much, just as much as I love whatever I loved yesterday. You get so it's not just fair to pick one thing <laughs> and then you this thing. <laughs> you are my favorite. <laughs> I mean, I, no. I, I hear you on that one. When it comes to movies and films and, and you know, podcast episodes, <laughs> I probably don't have a favorite, but there are a couple of things that I have a favorite of. Like I just said, I have a favorite color. I have, I don't have a favorite, um, I don't have a favorite food either. I don't have a favorite food. I have a variety of food I like. But when it comes to color, I like green. Green every day, every day. Makes me okay, really I, think that, I think I think I agree with the green because I'm seeing it in your podcast mm-hmm. art. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I mean, that's it. All right. No, that, that's, I just wanted to just throw that in there. Like, let me just know if you've mm. got the right stuff at all. So, um, what style, a newbie, someone coming into the industry newly, like next week, what would you say 
he or she should do first. The first thing you should do if they are going to get into practice. Hmm. I think the first thing you should do is to figure out what. Um, I think the first thing to do, right? This is actually very funny. But then I think that the first thing that anybody that wants to double into podcasting should know is that podcasting is actually hard work. That's one thing mm-hmm. you should know. Amen. I feel like we are in a stage right now where everybody feels like it's cool to say I'm a podcaster, you're sitting in a conversation, yeah. and you look cool, and you're like the anything. But as cool as that sounds, it is work. And it's is the first thing for you to recognize that it's it, it work. Don't just assume that it's pulling up your mic and just say, yeah, hello, guys, I'm back here now. It's a lot more than that. Because you need, you need, that's what number one thing you need to recognize. And number two thing, uh, number, no, number two, after recognizing that, I think the second thing you need to do is to figure out a range of topics that you're comfortable talking about and you enjoy talking about. I always feel a little bit somehow when people say, I just want to go on talking about trending topics. Trending topics are always going to trend, and a lot of people will have a lot of things to say. What is the new thing that you bring to that trending topic? What's the new conversation that you bring? Because that's what it's going to bring people to your podcast. If you're saying the same thing that everybody has said on Twitter, you're saying the same thing that everybody has said on Instagram, you're saying the same thing as they said on LinkedIn or wherever, there is really no extra spice to bring them to your podcast. So what's the extra thing that you're bringing? So I suppose you want to talk about trending topics. I use somebody who likes to talk about societal issues. That's the direction now, for example. So you can pick on trending issues, but even when things are not trending, you know that your angle is societal issues and you can pick on those things. So I think it's important to recognize a variety of things that you're comfortable talking about. And over time, you can figure out what your, um, whatever it is, what your, what your most interested talking about. It's okay to start not having a specific but at least have a list of things that you know that these things are things that I can be comfortably talking about, I can be comfortably doing my research about before I come and speak about them. Because I think another thing is sometimes you be coming to podcasting thinking, this is where I can just say anything and everything and nobody's going to fact check me. Don't do that to yourself. You say a lot of nonsense and people will not come back because you're not making sense. And it's important that you make sense because it's audio. You have to be able, it's not like video where they can admire your dress, admire how you look. It's audio. Mm-hmm. All they focus on is what you're saying. So you have to come correct. I think we have a use of some two, three, three things I would say that is important. Number one, realize that podcasting is hard work. It's not it's cool to be a podcaster. Very cool, yeah, it's cool, but it's also hard work. <laughs> but number two, you have to have a list of things that you can talk about a list of things that you're comfortable talking about and making research about, even if you don't know those things. And finally, and making sure that you are making sense. You are making sense. It's not just because you have an amazing um, opinion. Because your opinion makes sense. That's important. I agree. Okay, so you've, you've had close to 600 episodes, which is a lot. But you, have you had time when you did not feel like podcasting. Like, oh, uh, today, I don't want to near, I don't want to see my editor, that sort of thing. How did you go past mm-hmm. that, you know? Hmm. Interestingly, I, I, I suffered a lot of that this year. I suffered a lot of that this year. In fact, a lot of people who say they're queer artists, all the rock stars, I call my podcasters, my listeners who listen, they're all rock stars. Every rock mm-hmm. star knows that this year, I haven't, I haven't been on my best producing career graphic, graphic self. I haven't been on that top list ladder. And honestly, I have really, really suffered from just getting tired and exhausted and demotivated. And what I've done is sometimes that has helped me lately, because I'm still in the process of moving out of that phase, is I listen back to old episodes and I listen back to how happy I am delivering these amazing episodes. I listen back to old episodes. I, I read feedback sometimes. And Sometimes I listen to other people's podcasts as well because there's an amazing amount of podcasts, amazing podcasts out there, especially in the Nigerian podcasting community. And I listen back to other people's podcasts. And maybe something they said or something I hear would just inspire me to say, you should get your mic. You've been thinking something, something in this direction, maybe just a different angle. So those are some things that I have done to help me. And sometimes I have just allowed myself to be in that state. So my mind is quite clean. Like this year, I spent about almost 
two months of not doing anything podcasting. I didn't, I didn't even look at it. I resisted. I just left it alone because I just wasn't feeling up to it. And I said to not deliver my 100% of my rock stars. So I just wasn't podcasting. I just was enjoying my unproductive self because I realized that as a person, especially for me, I'm, able, I'm always trying to force myself out of situations. I, I'm happy for you to be the So any time that our happiness comes in, my quick reaction is, how do we do this? How do we get out? We need to get back to happy place. But I realized that's the problem. Those emotions are important, Rafi. If your sadness comes in, process the sadness, feel your feelings, and then move out of it. And that's what I learned this year. So when I started forcing, trying to get out of the phase of not podcasting, I mean, is you the queen of podcasting? Let me get out. A friend of mine calls me, oh, don't carry your podcast, your federal podcast. podcast. I'm like, well, how can you not have this ginger? But I realized it was important. Sit down in your non unproductive time. Enjoy the unproductiveness. Feel your feelings and gradually work yourself out of it. And Let's when I was done feeling my feelings, you want. <laughs> I'm telling you, as soon as I was done stewing and I walked out of it, wow, ginger was back. Everything, I was feeling good with myself. That's what I've learned to do. Listen to other people's podcasts. Listen to my own old episodes. Um, do my best to um, stew in my unproductiveness until that feels perfect. Mm-hmm. And I'm good again. I, 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 I even told, because I have a team, you know, my podcast kind of grew as a brand from just me being a host to other hosts that actually do their own episodes and you know it's growing like a brand of it on its own and I they yeah. noticed that I didn't put out episodes because I usually like to have episodes before the next month for example and I said you know what guys go we'll see each other next year <laughs> they want to bring me content <laughs> but I'm, I'm like you guys should just go and rest and besides I, I wanted to reshape the structure the brand because podcasting takes all of that. It's, it's the whole work. There's a standard. Mm-hmm. About, there's, mm-hmm. there's a way I want my podcast to be saying. I, I really don't care about the number of listens and all. I want that, that quality to be there in the next 10 years. If you come back to listen to me, you'll listen to that quality. Either. So I always tell people to take their time and rest. If you keep feeling like you have to show up back to back every week, I'm not burn out. I would tell you a lie to yourself. So I'm always quick to let people know that. So, so a time will come when you will get you will get tired, especially if you are doing everything. You're editing, you're recording, you're scripting, you're it's a lot of work. And we at Abba, we are we are thinking of ways. Um we've been strategizing for the past month now since we I think we launched three months ago, September, yeah. So we're strategizing on how to take away certain stressful aspects of podcasting for African podcasters so that podcasters can focus on the main thing they want to do. Imagine if all you have to do is record your podcast and somebody is editing it for you. Like, just record. Please, and go and sit down. please edit it for me. I will give you episodes <laughs> every day. <laughs> 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 So, well, thank you so much, Queen Rafi, for your time. I promise you I wasn't going to take much of your time, mostly because this is the holidays. I don't want anybody to be stressed. And, yeah, thank you. It's been short, but it's been very insightful. It's been fun. It's been amazing. It's been a good job. This would have been a physical life event, but it's all right. Thank <laughs> God for technology. Yes, yes, yes. And hopefully mm-hmm. we get to see you again. We get to work with you again because we have a lot of things to do. That we cannot do alone, and we'll have to do it with community leaders and podcasters of influence in the country and beyond. Thank you so much. Speaking of, what state are you from? As a person, like where I come from? Mm-hmm. Yes, state of origin. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm from Urban State. I'm a very proud Abiyokuta woman. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say, like, for, like, one last thing to say, I mean, it would, it would not yeah. make sense if I don't say this after you manager, right? I think mm-hmm. that if you're a podcaster, it's important that you find a community as well. That's another amazing thing that can help you. Agreed. Being a part of a community is going to help you in a lot of ways. Or when I, Even as a new podcaster, in fact, a new podcaster, you even need a community more than yeah. an old podcaster because 
there was no thing with all of the things that you're struggling about. Oh, where do I exist? How do I get this app? How do I get that app? How do I promote? How do I do this? Please join a community. We, we, I'm saying we because I mean, I'm part of the community. Yeah. A community will help you in a lot of ways. I mean, a community would motivate you. They would inspire you. They would celebrate your milestones. Your family might not understand what it means to get to 1,000 plays. But your podcasters understand. And they're going oh, to celebrate yeah. you. Yeah, you're going to celebrate you as much as possible. So I think it's important that you join a community. I mean, that part of is there. You can always follow us on Instagram, check out Mintry. You'll find all of the information that you need about us. We do like a lot of things. We do podcast reviews just to make sure that everybody's podcast is on that international level because the way podcasting is doing in Nigeria, we are about to blow it and we don't want to leave anybody behind. So, yeah, uh, you, we do like we we do your podcast to you. We we also um offer all kinds of other services as well that you can always come to here. And even we have like events that you can see on like um clubhouse where we talk and everybody free to bring their problems on there and talk about what they're going through and what they need help with. And even on the group WhatsApp Telegram, everybody is always posting questions. Oh, where can I find an app to edit it? Somebody has gone through anything that you want to go through right now. And they would always motivate you to be better. I became a good podcaster today because I had that community. They were the ones that inspired me to become, start editing the apps, to this, to that. And it's interesting because I started it, but I also benefited from it. So it's important that you have a community that really helps you. That will push you, that will help you, and that will make you feel seen and heard in the end time. And when there are lots of things happening in the, in the space, you will not be the last person to hear because it will be said in the community and you know how to navigate all of those things because a lot is happening and a lot of people are out there trying to take advantage of podcasts now. So you have to open your eyes and be smart about that. And the community will help you to do that. Thank you so much for um, bringing me on. I have enjoyed my time and I hope to be in Abuja someday so we can clearly have a discussion. I'm Thank you so much for this. I have enjoyed it. Thank myself. you. Thank you so very much. Do you have a wonderful day, Queen Rafi? Thank you. Have a Bye. beautiful day as well. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Hmm. Okay. There you go, guys. That was Queen Rafi. That was quite an exciting, bubbly episode, and I loved every bit of it. Watch out for our next guest. And the very last guest of the year, you guys are not going to believe who is coming up on the show. But yes, I can't wait for, the, for that particular episode. You guys are going to love it. Plus, you'll be hearing more about what we have to offer in 2022, what will be happening, and why you should watch this space. So I see you in the next episode. It might not be me, Austin, by the way, but bye. <laughs>